Hello Python Wizards! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Zek, and today we're going to be focusing on many-to-many -many relationships in SQL Alchemy. This concept can be a bit tricky, but fear not, I am here to break it down with clear explanations and practical examples. So let's get started. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more Python tutorials. In many-to-many -many relationships, a record in one table can relate to multiple records in another table, and vice versa. You can imagine a scenario where students enroll in various courses, and each course has multiple students. This is a basic example of a many-to-many -many relationship. And so to get started, be sure you have SQL Alchemy and Python installed on your system, and we will be using SQLite for simplicity. So you can start by having all of your imports here at the top, and then we have a database URL for SQLite colon triple forward slash database.db. This will be relative to the file, so it'll create it in this directory right here. And then we will create a database engine from our URL. And then we'll create a session object using the session maker class, binding it to our engine, and then create an actual session from this session object. And then we will say base is equal to declare to base. And we'll go ahead and get started with our classes. And so for the example that we had with student and courses, we will need to create two models, student and course. We'll also need an association table to link these two models together. So first up, we'll create the student class and have a table name set to students with an ID, a name, and a relationship of courses. And then we will create a course class, giving it the table name of courses with an ID, title, and a relationship to the students. And then now that we have both of these models, we need a table to link them together. And so we'll do this by having the variable student course link equal to the table of student course. We pass in the base.metadata, and then we give it two columns of student ID and course ID to be from each of these other tables down here. And this will basically be the middleman connecting the two tables together through these relationships. And it won't work just straight like this. We do have to pass another argument into both of these relationships. And those will be the secondary, meaning the secondary table that's associated with this. And this will be the association table that we have created over here. And so we've set this secondary argument equal to the variable that we created up here, the student course link. This is crucial for linking these two models through the association table. And so this will work just fine like this. But me personally, I like seeing the class set up instead of a variable equaling a table. And so another way we can rewrite this is to change this into a class student course inheriting from base with a table name of student course, giving it an ID and then passing these two columns of student ID and course ID, both foreign keys from the other tables. And since we changed this into a class instead of a variable, we need to change the secondary argument to be the table name instead of this variable that no longer exists. And so we can replace both of these with the name of student course. And this will also make it easier to add other kinds of variables inside this table that you want to keep track of for specific associations. So if you wanted to associate a grade with the student and the course, you can then make another column in here and have it keep track of it. Just like this. But for this example, we're not adding a grade, we're just showing the bare minimum here. And so now that we have all of our models set up, let's actually get some data into our database. So first up, we'll start by adding a couple of courses into our database. We'll add a math and a physics course. And then we will go ahead and create two students. We'll name one Bill and one Rob. And we will assign them the courses that they're going to take. So in this case, Bill is taking the math and physics course, and it is a list since this is a many-to-many -many relationship. And Rob is just taking one course, so it's a list of just the course math. And then we will go ahead and do session.addAll to add everything in some kind of iterable. So in this case, we have a list of all the things that we want to add at one time. And then we will go ahead and commit this to have this data actually go into our database. Before we add all of this data into our database, we need to first create our database and all of our tables. So we can do that by saying base.metadata.create underscore all of our engine to go ahead and create all of this data into our database. And so if we go ahead and run this, we can see that it did complete and it did give us a warning and we will touch on that warning here in a minute. And we can see that it did create our database. And if we go over to our database explorer and open up our database, we have our three tables. And if we open up our table, we can see that mathematics and physics was both added. 
The students table now has Bill and Rob, and our student course has the association between the student ID and the course ID. So student one is taking both course one and two, and student two is taking course one. And if you're wondering what I'm using to see the database, I'm using this extension for VS Code called Database Client. And now that we have all of our data, we will go ahead and comment out this code so it doesn't try to do it again next time you run this. And we can see there is a warning about the relationship copying data and it conflicting with other relationships. And so there is a way to make this warning not appear and get around this. We can do this by adding the named argument of backpopulates equal to the variable name that the relationship is associated with. So in this case, for this class student, for these courses, they are associated with the students in the course table. So we are backpopulating the students variable inside of this class. And then the course class for this student's variable, we are backpopulating the courses in the student class. So if we go ahead and uncomment this code and we run it again, and you can see it completed with no warning. We'll go ahead and comment this back out and we'll go ahead and perform a query on this to see that it actually did link these tables together. So we'll go ahead and do this by saying Rob is equal to session.query of our student. And we're going to filter by the name of Rob and get the first entry that pops up. And then we'll go ahead and have a variable called courses equal to a list comprehension of the titles of all the courses that Rob is attending. And then we'll go ahead and print out Rob's courses and we'll go ahead and join all of the courses, separating it by a comma and a space. So if we go ahead and run this, we can see that Rob's courses are just mathematics. But if we go ahead and change the name over here to Bill, we'll go ahead and change the print statement to Bill as well. Go ahead and run this again, and we can see that Bill is attending both mathematics and physics. Another real world example of using this many to many relationships is a doctor patient relationship with an appointment. So, for this example, we do need to import date time from date time and add this date time import from SQL Alchemy. And here we can see we have a class appointment giving it the table name of appointments. We have it with an ID, a doctor ID, a patient ID, an appointment date, and some notes for the appointment. And then inside this association table, we have the relationship to a doctor and a patient. And this is because both doctors and patients can have multiple appointments. And we have other data that we need associated with these appointments. So then we have the class doctor with the table name of doctors, giving it both an ID, a name, and a specialty. And then the class patient giving an ID, name, and a date of birth. Just in case you're wondering, for this appointment date column that we have here of a date time, we have a default argument set to datetime.utc now. In this case, we're pointing it to a function. This is the default function that will be called if we do not provide an actual value when creating this entry in the database. One thing you might notice is we have the relationship to the doctor and the patient on the association table instead of on the individual tables, like we saw in the previous example. And we can provide this backref argument to indicate what the relationship will be called on both of these tables. So in this case, for the doctor table, we're calling the backref appointments. So whenever we do perform a query through SQL Alchemy and get a doctor instance, we can do doctor.appointments to actually see what the appointments are for that doctor or vice versa for the patient table. And so now that we have these tables all set up, we can go and get some data in here. We're going to have a Dr. Smith equal to a doctor, giving it a name and a specialty. And then we'll have a patient named John Doe, giving the date of birth of 1990, January 1st. And then we'll set up an appointment between the two, assigning the doctor to Dr. Smith and the patient to John Doe, and giving it a note of just a routine checkup. And then we'll go ahead and add all of these to our session and go ahead and commit it to save it in the database. And so we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see no output, meaning that everything worked. We'll go ahead and head back over to our database client and refresh this. It does have our old tables in here because I haven't cleared out those tables, but for the purpose of this tutorial, this is fine. If we go ahead and click on patients here, we can see that John Doe has been created with this date of birth. And if we go to doctors, we can see Dr. Smith as cardiology. And then if we head over to the appointments table, we can see that the doctor has been linked with the patient along with an appointment date and the note. So we'll go ahead and comment out all of this code and we'll do some queries. First up, we'll get all of the appointments for Dr. Smith. So we'll do a session.query on the appointments table. And we'll filter this by doing the appointment.doctor.has, meaning if there are any doctors with an appointment with the name of Dr. Smith, then it will retrieve all of those appointments with that doctor name. Then we'll go ahead and get all of them. 
and we'll go ahead and print out Dr. Smith's appointments and all the appointments related to Dr. Smith. If we go ahead and run this, we can see that Dr. Smith's appointments are printed here, and there's only one appointment shown here in this list. So we can go ahead and find all the appointments for our patient of John Doe. So we'll do the exact same thing here, but instead of appointment.doctor, we do appointment.patient.has. So it'll filter out any appointments that has a patient with the name of John Doe. And then we'll go ahead and print out John Doe's appointments. So if we go ahead and run this again, we can see that it printed both Dr. Smith's appointments and John Doe's appointments. Another example of a many-to-many -many relationship is when we have a user that follows another user, and then they also have a list of followers. So we are keeping track of all the users that our current user is following and all of the users that are currently following our user. To get started with this, we will go ahead and have the same setup that we've been having for this video. And we will go ahead and create a user association class inheriting from base, giving it a table name of user associations, providing it an ID that's an integer, a follower ID that's a foreign key to users.id, and that table we'll create in a minute. And then we have a following ID, which is the exact same thing. This is what will help distinguish between a follower and a followee, or the person following another user. These help distinguish who is the follower and who is the followee. We can go and create our user table and give it the table name of users, and then give it an ID column as an integer, a name as a string, and then we will go ahead and create a following variable that has a relationship to this user class. We leave it as a string. And then with this, we need to pass a secondary argument to the user association table name. So in this case, it is user associations, the same thing we have up here for table name. And then we provide a primary join variable. And this will be user association.follower ID is equal to our user ID. This is to help us manage that our current user is following other users and how it's going to join the tables together when it performs this relationship. And then we provide a secondary join argument. That's going to be user association dot following ID is equal to user ID. And this will specify how this relationship will get all of the followers to our current user. And then we provide a backref argument as followers. This will allow us to access all of the followers to our current user, just like we can access all of the users that our current user is following through this following variable. To make our examples a little bit easier to read, we will provide this double underscore repr double underscore and we'll return an F string of our user with our user's name. And lastly, for our tables, we will go ahead and do base.metadata.createAll of our engine to go ahead and create all of our tables here. And now we'll create a user1 variable and set it equal to a new user, giving it the name of John, and then a user2 doing the same thing, giving the name of Rob, and user3 giving him the name of Kyle. And now that we have our users, we can go ahead and start using the relationship. And we'll go ahead and start this off by saying user1 is now following user2. And since the relationship is by default a list, we can use list operations like append. Then we will go ahead and say user2 is now following user1, and user3 is now following user1 as well. And so once we have our relationship all set up now, we can go ahead and add all of these to our session, and then go ahead and commit it to save our changes. And here we'll go ahead and print out an F string of our user1, and show that they are following whoever they are following. And we will do the same thing by printing another F string of user one, and we'll show who's all following our current user. And you can see my syntax highlighting is highlighting following, but it's not highlighting followers. And that's just because my syntax highlighter cannot find that variable, and that's okay, but that variable is just right here and we can access it. But now that we have this, we can go ahead and run our file. And we can see that it did create everything and it's printing out that our user John is now following our user Rob and our user John is being followed by Rob and Kyle. And we can see that relationship is all set up right here. And that's pretty much how you handle many-to-many -many relationships in SQL Alchemy. It's all about setting up your models correctly and understanding the association table. You can experiment around with different scenarios and see what you can build. If you enjoyed this tutorial, leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching, check out other videos for more Python tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one.